a fan tribute to the world of Narnia. Um, I saw this reference image and it just, I couldn't decide Potter, Narnia, but I realized it really reminded me too much of Narnia and, and the winter wood. And uh, I've been kind of on a Narnia kick lately. So we're going this way. Now, this is part of a collection of children paintings that we do. There is a playlist with the other little boy paintings. And then we have a lot of little girl paintings. Kind of that will remind you a little bit of the a bygone era of Holly Hobby. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring these lessons to you by turning all the stuff on because I can't do that. And uh, logging onto the internet because I can't do that. And um, figuring out where the things are plugged in, including my hair dryer, because I can't do that. Hmm. So really, he's a very, very essential part of the show. So everybody give John a hand for being here and helping us get our live going and teaching art for free around the Hello. world. I have to love it. Um, I also have to shout out our moderators today. So I, I had a really fun day. I went over and uh, there's a comedian that I really like, uh, Eddie Izzard. And um, Eddie Izzard is running 31 marathons in 31 days, followed by live comedy shows right after the marathon and but also put that into context it kind of blew my mind so i was in there Mm -hmm. lovely community and oh are they blessed it's a lovely community because they didn't have moderators and they didn't have any problems it was a really lovely good positive energy kind of show but it did make me realize you know, that we have these amazing volunteers and they help us have these shows and how grateful I am for everybody who comes and spends their time with us. So clappy clappies for the moderators, you know. Oh, and now you know that Eddie Izzard, if you are a fan of that comedian, mm-hmm. does a run and talk on the treadmill thing. And yeah. that's literally what it is. Run and talk on the treadmill thing. You have friends that, friends that she knows. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, so Eddie, I'm not sure if the, the audio may have been little sketchy there it was so but it looks like everything's okay here so sorry about that there was my brilliance was not uh, uh they couldn't hear my brilliance some of it some but it was, was all lost. so brilliant it was all brilliant it was if you didn't hear it you that was the secret to painting i'm so sorry you'll catch it. you'll have to re, you recap <laughs> it later in the show never never maybe, how much maybe, did we miss i don't know only on, only the, the important after seconds. i shouted you out huh <laughs> after i was like he's so amazing well so what happened is is that all of a sudden something goes wrong and my brain goes flat and it's like what's the problem and i find it and then i go oh yeah you were saying something <laughs> so thank goodness my community loves me <laughs> <laughs> oh kelly jarvey thank you so much i would thank everybody for coming in i see Karina georgetta uh and she's noticing the wish and intention on the canvas um and then if it's more appropriate for you to make this a prayer i say to each person you take to this what is right for you Mm -hmm. i i have what's right for me but i don't like to project that um too much on other people so uh this is kind of an act of positivity and we do this on our canvases and i'm just wishing and i'm going to be doing this for a while until i see this actively change in the world because i think this is probably the most pressing thing which is self-love compassion self-respect and self-forgiveness mm-hmm. right because i don't think we can give those things to other people if we're not first learning how to be generous in those areas with ourselves. so this is there i am on the masterson stay wet palette again and yes i am still loving it link is in the description below it made a link, made a they, link. i bet they're just so thrilled up there at masterson going oh, i made a sherpa link no they don't care <laughs> um cad yellow <laughs> this is a cad yellow medium this is naples yellow light this is burnt sienna this is ultramarine blue right here is the ultramarine blue to the right of it is the thalo blue quinacridone magenta uh cad red medium mars black and titanium white we will be capturing the steps um they're taking a little longer in post than expected and i'm going to be really honest that's a lot me just you know, adding that work cycle to my day. I'm kind of getting used to it. We'll we'll get a rhythm for it and they'll be coming out a little more quickly. Uh, uh, the one for free is going to release uh, probably in a day. And then shortly after that, the Cozy Cups mini books. If you're not familiar, there are mini books for the 2021 lessons that you can download and give written out step-by-step instructions. Hmm. 
How nice is that? Let's paint this entire canvas. I'm going to go ahead and take my watercolor words and I'm going to put them into the canvas where apparently uh, they go into the universe and uh, things get better. I just watched the movie Soul with the kids from Disney, John, mm. on the Disney Plus channel. Yeah. No, they don't pay me. I'm not a sponsored. Nothing for Disney if you work for Disney. Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw the movie. My son says to me, he's like, we have to see it. It's the best movie Disney ever made. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that's a pretty big statement, kiddo. And he's like, no, it's the best movie ever made. He's always up on the ads. And, and here's the crazy thing, John. He knew that John Baptiste from the... The Late Show with Stephen Colbert oh, yeah. was the musician, and it was super important to him because um, John Baptiste is his favorite on The Late Show. Uh, it was super important to him to see it because he had written the music, and I watched it, and I'm going to be honest, I cried, I cheered, I laughed. It was a genuinely good movie. For me. Yes. For me. For me, for me. I see Rebecca Hoffman and Moderator Cad Red is letting everyone know what the canvas is. And Karen is saying she loves the mini books. And Diana Angel is confirming with her new unicorn. She's now in our, our emoji club. <laughs> uh, my daughter just watched Soul and she loved it. And yeah, this is absolutely an 8x8 eight eight canvas. And thank you, Karen Hepner, sending love and appreciation to Sherpa and the team. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you really appreciate that uh it, it's very helpful and we're so grateful for it okay john put up uh step one we forgot to do that whole thing we just i have it ready yeah see i'm gonna dry everything and draw this in and then we're done yeah. with drawing it in we're gonna do step two yeah. it'll this be is step okay one. This it's is okay step one just letting you know Whereas this is step one this is where we're starting step one have step the canvas one. ultramarine blue you could also yeah, do phthalo blue. blue you could do cerulean blue Huh? This is a good step. Yeah, it's a good step. It's, it's good that we talked about it. Now that you've done this, you're officially an artist. Ding! You've done step one. I'm going to hair dry things and hope that the power doesn't go out in the house. There she goes. And <laughs> we shall hope. You know, having a studio in a 100-year-old house comes with all sorts of new surprises. Like, don't use heat because it's not good for your paint. And... Also not good for your electrical system when you have a whole bunch of lights and cameras plugged into it. But that's not really what we're here for. You there? Yes, I am. All right. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, I just have to read this. Sharon O'Brien uh, says, John Baptiste is awesome. The movie is good. I agree. John Baptiste is like just amazing. Tracy and Heather are coming in saying hi to everyone. Rosie says she broke down after the movie too. And Tracy Roth says, what's this ultramarine blue? Because sometimes I teach art while I talk about movies. Yes, it totally was ultramarine blue. So you're going to want this surface to be completely dry. And we're going to use the transfer method. Now on the website, if you look in the description below, besides information and links and resources to make your life so much easier. And when the mini books are in, the links will also go there um, and into the pages. There... Uh, there is uh, on the page a grid. So if you prefer the gridding method, you've got that. But if you prefer the tracing method, this is a demo of that. I'm going to demo it with serral paper. Um, however, in the mini book, it tells you a couple different ways to do it. So don't feel stressed. Unless you have to wait for the mini book. It feels totally stressed. <laughs> so what I have here is the printed out traceable. And I have a sheet cut to match of serral paper. I have the serral paper transfer side down. And I'm going to tape, 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 tape this down. The reason that we tape things down is we really, really, really don't want it to move. You may wonder, what kind of tape are you using? I'm using a combination of washi tape and painter's tape, which is low tack. The exact brand is Stick, S-T-I-K-K. Then all you do is take a, you could take a jelly roll pen, you can take a pencil, you can take a stylus if you are a purist of the transfer method and you just go over your construction lines for your major subjects, which is the boy. Oh, thank you, Stephanie Barlow. She's thanking us for being a consistent bright spot of happy. Trying to do that, right? Nah, it's just good time to be happy and come together and be soft gentle with each other 
It's a good time to do that. Uh, Jessica Denner says, where can I get the traceable? You look down in the description below yes. and there is a link to the website. Also, the moderators will probably drop one in chat because they are amazing. Now, is this step two? We're Not on? yet. We're going to start yet. step two at the end of the transfer. Okay. And that'll get some organization going for the mini book. The mini book is written from the process uh, in the show. And uh, it usually takes me, uh, when we do it like this, it takes me a few days to get it out. So you just come by the web page, and I'll also announce it. If you follow me anywhere on social media, I tend to announce things. So I'll let you know when a particular video's mini book is out. And they are free to download if you want to download them yourself. So you can see I just go over all my lines. Now, I have changed the branch. And you may wonder, why did she change the branch from the reference photo? Because I really didn't like it. <laughs> um, a lot of times, when you're a very new artist, you will feel like you've got to stay really beholden to the photo. But you do not. Now, I don't really need to have every little branch up because I'm pretty confident in my branching. But you may want to. And so I have them all there. Um, when you are using a photo, say from your trip or vacation that you really like, there will be all kinds of weird things in the photo. Trust me, there are trash cans, strange stuff, fences that don't belong there, and all the horizon line, whatever it is, that would ruin the image for a painting. And you want to get to a place where you can make little minor adjustments from your references to improve the composition. Uh, uh, Lucy Drew Fuqua, the other day I was painting and noticed my Mars black had a strong odor. Is there a cause of that happening? So I've never had it in my paint, Lucy, but I have heard about that from others. I am going to assume that you need to contact, what is the paint company, if you can tell us. Um, I may have a direct answer. Certain paint companies tend to have a bit more of an odor depending on the acrylic polymer they use. But whenever you have anything truly strange with your paint, contact the manufacturer, not even where you bought it from. People where you bought it from, and they'll be like, oh, it's supposed to be like that. Cottage cheese paints like that all the time. That's how it looks. It does not look like that. It doesn't. Mm. So contact the people that made the paint. Uh, make sure you take pictures. And a lot of times they will, you know, t they'll not only solve the problem for you, but they may send you replacement paint because uh, the good companies always will do that. Can we have a glimpse of the reference? I will show you here. This is the reference that I am using. And John has put it up as well. So now that is also on the website. And you can see I printed the reference out for myself even as I paint this. And I highly recommend you do the same. Let's hope this transferred well. Transferred good enough. Some transfer. Some transfer happened. You're going to firm those lines up and then that's. Yeah, I'm going to firm these up a bit and then, and then we will take a photograph. Photograph. So to be real honest, sweetheart, I've been doing a thing where I use a post edit method to make sure these lines are so much more visible for everybody on the step by steps. All right. Just because I think it's a. You have modes and methods. I do. It's that teaching thing. I, uh, I'm really into it and I like to help people paint. So, you know, painting is a weird thing. When you paint, you give yourself time to process things in a way that, you know, uh, life does not always afford us uh, in the world, right? We're not always afforded a minute. The world is very noisy and everybody wants to take space in our brain and tell us who we are and what we think, what we should be excited about, what we should be afraid of, all of those things. And the thing is, is everybody's an individual. So when you paint, you can take a minute and hear yourself think. And uh, I hear from people all the time about how freeing that experience of just being able to be with themselves for a second can be. Now I understand that is not everybody's experience, right? But that is a lot of people's experience with art. Now, how come you didn't uh, paint around the edges of the canvas? Uh, well, a ca canvas on this thin of a stretcher uh, really goes, tends to go in a frame, but you can paint around the edge of the canvas if you don't intend to frame it. 
for me, it's just going to be make a big mess on my little turntable here. So <laughs> I'm not going to participate in that. But you can if you want to. Um, Victoria C, is it ultramarine blue? It is. Uh, and Vicki Taylor confirms. That's what they tell her uh, that uh, that is what it's supposed to be like. Yeah, if your paint ever looks like cottage cheese, that is not what it's supposed to be like. Paint, acrylic paint should look like warm, smooth butter. Everything okay? Oh, yeah, thank you. And then, and it's, and then we'll do step two. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm there. I'm super there. Sheila Harvey says she would like to receive our Chirpa emails. They are amazing. Um, how does that happen, please? So when you sign up on our website, there is a newsletter. I believe you're automatically opted in. So if you're not seeing it, um, first thing I'd always check spam because a lot of times emails, our, our website is strange and your email may want to put it in the spam folder. But if you can't figure out what it is like in a simple way like that, email us at support at the artsherpa.com and we will help you get opted into the newsletter. I also put the newsletter in our blog on the website and I also put it in a file in the Art Sherpa official group on Facebook just to make sure you guys have that. But Let's get us a nice little square brush. We're kind of painting yep. at a calm and leisurely pace today. It's a leisurely pace today. What's real fun is we're going to be doing the background and the background is going to really be almost a negative space painting because we're going to be painting around our objects. And I'm just taking my titanium white and my ultramarine blue and I'm going to take, this is a 20 short handled ruby satin brush and a long handled be about a size eight. Oh. Uh, what frame can you use on a canvas like that? Well, this is a standard size, Victoria D. So you can go into almost any hobby shop and they will have uh, frames for sale ready to pop together um, with little clip-ins and all these amazing convenience things. But you can also find uh, standard sizes, you know, 9x12, 8x10, 8x8, 16x20 at... Um, resale shops and sometimes you can find these gorgeous frames or moldings that people have let go that they don't realize were probably $25, $50 a linear foot mm -hmm. and uh, really do some interesting stuff. So we're just going to go around here. We're going to be taking this very light color to about two thirds up the canvas. I went into his little nose a little bit so I'll have to bring his little nose back. Uh, coil art and competition. Has anyone been to India? I have not been, but when the world's safe again and I can travel again, I'd like to go. Yeah. We have a large community in India. I'm very grateful for that. Large being relative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what they a, have a they have a India has a relatively large community to start. So yeah. we probably have a relatively small penetration into that very, very large but market. But we're excited. So. We're excited for the ones who avoid <laughs> us, for sure. Uh, Tammy says, will this be a good skin tone lesson? This will be an excellent skin tone lesson. Um, I do a lot of skin tone lessons. If you want to really focus on skin tone, I've got a really great... Uh, uh, how to make skin tones with primary colors. I've got some basic skin tone recipes and some short videos. And then um, I have a lot of videos where we really, really get into skin tone. Mm. We're going to add a little more blue over here. So this is the ultramarine blue and the titanium white. Just going to take it up to two thirds in this lighter value and then we're going to do a darker value above now i'm pretty confident i can put my brush back so rather than uh, branch back rather than worry about things i'll mm. paint into it if you struggle with branches you may want to slow down and paint around your branch carefully you might carefully around the branch yeah 
I'm choosing to do ultramarine in the background because if I go into phthalo blue for, uh, I feel this is Peter, for Peter's sweater, um, then uh, it will really pop even though there's a lot of blue in the canvas. I'm from Australia, says Salty Peppermint. Hi, Salty Peppermint. Mm. Question, when will you finish The Warrior? I believe she's on the schedule. I think she's back up. I don't remember the exact day, but she should be in the upcoming live streams. So she's already scheduled out, and she'll be done this. The next lesson, we're done. We're done. We, have, we will have finished all of Fairy Tale, Big Art Quest Fairy Tale. And just not too long after that, what will we be into? We'll be into Acrylic April, so we won't even, we won't even miss anything, will we? No. Oh. I'm going to keep going. And Twix is visiting us. And we have a few uh, community members in Australia as well. In Australia? And I see Salty. Sheila Harvey says, I'm in Tasmania. Oh, they're talking cricket. Cricket the game? Or cricket a bug? The game. I assume the game, but it's, you never it's, know. It's hockey serious in there now. Uh-oh. Okay. Because. Yeah, I just said sports. Because <laughs> sports. <laughs> <laughs> Go team. Yeah. You move to uh, Canada and you don't realize how serious that hockey biz is. Mm-hmm. You're like, what's happening in the alley? Oh, no, it's talking. And just go around the side. All right. Look at that. Just nice and loose and relaxed, right? By being loose like this, you're going to create an effect of this being feeling very out of focus. And um, these objects being much more in focus, which will pull them forward. John, are you ready to take a picture and pop up a three? I am. Uh, you should do a video with your children. On occasion, rarely, I do let the kids participate. We had Spider do a show. And to be really honest, YouTube does not protect children. So we had some weird stuff come up. And so we're, we're careful. We on it, they do sometimes, but in very curated, controlled kind of situations. It's going to be three. Shay Cherie says, will you be using the same size canvases from my? Yes, always eight by eight. Acrylic April into forever is eight by eight. Also, the split primary palette, which is listed in the description below, forever. And, except now, the split primary palette is all year. And on Tuesdays, we have 8 by 8 canvases at the table. So it will let you guys kind of continue your Acrylic April journey past Acrylic April. Uh, and if you don't know, Acrylic April is a 30-day painting challenge that I organize where you start out and build every single day, painting and painting every single day. And so you start out kind of like with skills. The skills build into each other. And at the end, you're kind of rocking out the art. It's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. What is the best canvas brand? Well, best is ampersand. Um, but beyond that, uh, you want to look at canvas more and is it a good cotton duck? What is the thread count? What are they finishing it with? Um, I have links to an economy canvas I bought on Amazon that has not given me any trouble for quite a while now, so it's down there. Um, whenever you buy a less expensive canvas, sometimes you have like a, a sealant or finish problem where it's almost like they bite the paint. The best way I can think of to explain it. Fight the paint. I'm going to oh. get, uh, I'm going to just take a little it's break. It's like rocking the boat. Maybe a number round. Let's go here. Don't do it. So we're going to do a thing called blocking in. Um, blocking in is where we don't really paint in all the details, but we start to paint in the values and hues. Values is how light or dark something is, and the hues is the color that it is. So let's start with our... Our wonderful sweater, right? This beautiful sweater, and we're taking our thalo blue here. Thalo blue is a very transparent color. And we're going to just paint this in. Now, as we come around the sleeve, we'll want to lighten the value because the sleeve, as you will notice, has a bit of a lighter value right here. 
So we're not getting all the details. We are getting the sense of form and shape. Uh, Sherpa, when can you when you purchase a canvas one, two, or three? What does that mean? Uh, generally, that means one is student, two is mid grade professional, and three is professional. And all that really means is not that you have to be professional to use the three canvas, but the three canvas is finished uh, better. It has a uh, better duct. It has better uh, uh, stretchers on it. It's much less likely to be warped or have issues. And um, it's what you would use like if you were maybe selling your art or looking to uh, have a more finished final piece for your house. It's really, so, uh, and that's true for paint tiers one, two, and three as well. All right, okay, so newbie here, I usually do my art freehand, so I'm kind of wondering about the paper used to get the traced image. What left the mark that was traced over on the canvas? So this is a product called Serral Paper. It is made for art. I have used it for a while. My, my genius mom found it and it really did make everything a lot easier. There's a link to the company uh, in the description. And um, what I will say is, is I like white and yellow better. Do read their little blog about how to get the best results from your Serral Paper. I think it's worth reading um, because well, following instructions always helps. I really do enjoy it, and it has made that process of transfer, especially with acrylic, which tends to be a little plastic, easier. You can see how we add white where we want to lighten the value, and then we go back into the pure blue where we are wanting to deepen the value. There we go. That is the blue sweater. Blue sweater. Totally good. I am going to now do the gray, which we see here. The gray is sort of interesting. I'm going to add, this is titanium white Mars black and a little burnt sienna to each other. Where we want to have a lighter value. You can come around here. It all just works out in the end. If it's not working out, what do you then know? That it's not the end. Then you're not at the end. Take a little bit of dark value at the edge and we'll come in and define areas like this scarf uh, better uh, as we come back and look at these things. Uh, Mary Youngblood suggesting um, you could use cobalt as an alternative to ultramarine, and that would be perfectly fine. Mm. Uh, ultramarine is a red bias blue. It's a, a pretty historic color. Uh, sometimes it's called Windsor blue out of the country. So you may have it and not know you have it. Let's put in some brown hair a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to do it. We're going to rough in his skin tones uh, in their own step which is what we're doing. So we're just roughing in. That's Mars Black and Burnt Sienna for the hair. Now I'll come in a little bit because I want to make sure I have room to be funny and have uh, the hair kind of be a little interesting because I think it's wonderful when little boys have crazy messy huh. hair. That's just the way they often are. That's just the way they often are. What brand of paint do I use? I like Sennelier Acrylique, mm -hmm. which is this brand here. I like Golden Artist Colors. I like Holbein. Uh, in student paint, I like Abstract Acrylic by Sennelier. Um, and uh, PBO is good. Uh, also, Amsterdam Acrylic is good. Um, so there's the little group of M. Graham is really good. So there's a few of them. I have a blog where I list all the paints that I like and all the paints that they are. Sometimes I don't have an opinion on a paint because I've never used it. I'm going to take a little of my burnt umber, um, sent sienna out, and I'm going to just add some white to it. And we're going to just use this as the basis of, say, owl. We 
We have lots of layers and things to do on him, so. Yeah. Might as well just kind of get some stuff in, and then we can come in and work him in a bit later. Again, I'm just using a number eight Raphael Textura Bright Synthetic. Just getting the rough owly. You just get the rough part in first. You really kind of have to get this rough part in first. And then, you know, as you go, you come in and you add details. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times I'll tell people the tracing, the projection, the gridding or freehanding, all of it is kind of irrelevant on painting because the way that we construct paintings is not the same as the way that we construct drawings. So you still have to be able to paint it in and go through those steps, no matter how you get the image on the canvas. Hmm. Not to mention uh, that this is a very old and tried method in the universe. So we're just doing a little lighter around his face. Maybe come around the eye a bit. And then we're well, not going to be perfect. We're just going to be general. Uh, Kate Hale says in Arizona, I had trouble with the paint drying fast. Also, I used a water bottle and spritz my palette and canvas on occasion. That's works really well. I've got a humidifier here and I'm using the Masterson stay wet palette, which I didn't used to use, but now I do use, mm. I do use forever. Now I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue and my Mars black with my number four round, my number four round, and I'm mixing them together and I'm going to come in and paint in my branch a little bit, and then I guess I gotta come back and put in his little tail. Sometimes we just gotta get stuff roughed in. And that just takes a second. You'll see me grabbing a drop of water now and again to improve the flow. I can roll my brush out. Let's bring a bit of a jaggedy little branch over, which was interesting. I drew it on my traceable, so I'll put my traceable here as a reference. Who's me? Hmm. Now, when you're doing these branches, you had some non-forking techniques Yes. So what happens to a lot of people is that they will want to, I don't know, I'll just do it on this. They'll want to do a branch and then come up and they do a branch and then they go branch, 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 and they end up with like chicken foot or the fork, however you want to refer to it. But what you really want to do is have bends and wobbles. I got the paper's a little bit thirsty. And then you branch out this way. And it'll just look a little more natural for you. So what you're saying is don't chicken out. You'll, don't chicken out. You'll be able to branch out. The other thing to remember is that the branches are ever diminishing. Um, so the branch has to be smaller than the branch it's attached to. Branches mm. in general. Now, I understand there are some trees. There's like one in the world that are different than that. Yeah, it's like one of them. Yeah. Like and so if you're painting that tree, I guess definitely stick with that reference. But in general, in branches, it is the other. All righty. I'm going to come here, and now we're going to pull some feathers down for the tail. And I forgot. We're still with the number four round. That was the burnt sienna and the white. I'm not going to worry yet about roughing in uh, the bird's beak or eye because those are very small detail pieces and we kind of really know where they are. We're going to be putting feathers in. So chances that we'd be painting it out are very high. Let's sure. photograph this at this stage so that when we mix the skin tone, that's all we're focusing on. Because I know sometimes that feels a little overwhelming. We're going to call this another next step. What is the step? Four. I also love my coffee microwaved. Monique says hello beautiful people uh and tammy says the oak in my the oak tree in my backyard pitchforks <laughs> well there you go I and mean, the reference is the reference but 
Sometimes it reads a little weird in the painting. Uh, Heather says she got the Stay Wet palette when she was in Arizona, but she finds it very useful in New York. I think it's the heating that we have to do up here. I'm wearing Pennsylvania now. And so in the winter, you got to run all the heaters and all the things, and it takes the moisture out of the air. Oh, my goodness. Like, my eyeballs are like, squink, 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 squink. Jonathan S., thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um... Patricia Lewis, who sells ampersand canvas, can't seem to find. So if you go to the ampersand website, um, you will see it on there. I have found them on Amazon. Um, now, they may have stock, They may have run low on stock. A, COVID has messed up a lot of things for art companies. Um, so if you don't see it on Amazon, you can go there. But fine art stores also carry it. And uh, they do cradled artist boards, which are really just a joy to paint on. Um, and they're really spectacular. If you're entering into art shows or you're giving like really special gifts that, that you want to have like on the wall and it's like, oh, ah, that's your ampersand moment. Not, I wouldn't use them as a daily. I mean, they would probably love it if you use them as a daily painter, but it might be overkill. Uh, Don Hartwell says, I've had a hard time painting loose. Any suggestions? Ooh, Mary Young Blood loses the new emoji. Yeah, um, so I'm going to, I'm kind of, kind of bum me out, but this is honestly true. Paint every single day, one painting every single day. You will loosen up. You will have a little break in the middle of that journey. That's going to be definitely life changing, but you will loosen up because the only way to paint every day, you give yourself an hour and you say, I got to do this painting in an hour and you have to learn to start painting looser and it will help you. Um, that's why I started the Acrylic April program was so that people could take advantage of the benefits of that. I'm going to change my water, and that is because the blue is not going to really be in my benefit. Today, we're going to kind of start our skin tone with a little bit of our Naples yellow and a lot of white. Oh, and apparently some blue, so not that. <laughs> Rinsing up, not blue. Oh, you can do skin tones with blue quite well. There we go. The Naples yellow. Which step are we on, babe? Four. Four. We're now, yeah, I do believe. Get some burnt sienna. You want a very, very light color, and we're going to start here. Now, this is going to be a little transparent, and so some of what we're going to be doing is getting that first layer on, right? So it's a little bit of burnt sienna. Naples yellow light and white. And where this kind of value and tone will be will be more on the areas of the face that are exposed to brighter parts of light, like cheeks and things. And I may have to switch to my round brush, which is okay. I'm going to go up into the hair a bit because I know I'm going to bring the hair back down. So you'll see it's streaky, and that's a little bit of why I am compelled. I'll add some of this right here to the neck, and I'm going to switch to a round so I'm not struggling around the spaces. I could work the corner of my brush, but I find um, it can be a little bit tight. back and bring back some of this nose that I definitely have lost. Now, when I'm coming into some parts of the skin, I'm going to get a little bit of my Quinn Magenta involved. You're going to see that that pinks things up. I don't necessarily want everything pinked up, but I definitely probably want the nose area to have a little bit of a pink cast to it. Mm -hmm. And come down the lip. And again, remember guys, this is layer one. A little bit of that coming this way. I may just go ahead and put the eye back in a second. Where I'm at the ear, I definitely, definitely want to be much more pink. And it's even okay to almost exaggerate that. Yeah. Uh, and that's just because, you know, when we're out in the snow and stuff, we have cold ears. 
Mm. And that causes the blood to really rush to the surface. When I want to go on the inside of the ear, I can come right into this burnt sienna and black, and we're going to just value that in. That ear shape. There's hair coming over it. There's more details to do. So don't be too worried at this stage about that. Come under the nose a bit with a little bit of that brown color. Mm -hmm. And I just add a little bit of that brown and black where I'm just going to be doing sh shading or shadowing. It also do blue. Hmm. That would be fine as well. Soften this through the jaw. And then I need to pull in the background just a little bit. So I'm going to pull out some of my ultramarine blue with my white. That's the other reason sometimes it's nice to have a simplified background. There we go. Now let's start. We'll start. I'm grabbing this little black blue mix that I had over here. And we're going to put our eye back in. Now the thing about our eye is, is it's just smaller than you think. Hmm. Let me just put this here. I'm not going to get anything involved into it. I might just, just a smidge. But you can't really see it, can you? Everything is very tiny in the eye. A little bit of white there. Just starting to think about it, put it in. And then we do on the brow, we can start to put in the brow with the same basic colors we put in the hair. Mm. And we dry this, and then we're going to come back and kind of finish it up. Now, his, his is very, very light, and I like it a little bit light, so I may even add some yellow and some white to this because we want this to not be the darkest brow. We are not done. This is the start, right? That's what we're doing. We're not finishing, we're starting. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're going. Mm -hmm. Let's take a picture of this, sip our coffee, read some questions. Kate Backum said, YouTube recommended me to you. Then you must be a lovely, wonderful human being that loves creativity, joy, and happiness. Because that's who they send us. They're really good at that. I have come to appreciate the wisdom of the algorithm. <laughs> Even though sometimes I'm like, ah, but you know what? It gets really good. And I, I have decided that it looks for people who are like, I like happiness and creativity and joy and fun. Oh, Mandy, thank you so much. Welcome to Emoji Chat. I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. Um, just because I want to come in. I know many of you are like, oh, how am I going to do the face? And I just want to show you how this is done. I think you'll be surprised at how accessible it is. Okay. Do, 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 do. So, while she's doing that, I'll say thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate you coming and being here with us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can find links to all the information about today's show in the description down below. If you ever need any help with anything, you can always go to our website. And uh, we have a help ticket there where you can punch in the support and we'll help you. So, Arlene has a good question. What's, what's the best question? paintbrush set to buy from your store for overall tutorials? So per, I do have a store and it has stuff in it, but it doesn't have like uh, like that brush set. So uh, there is an Art Sherpa brush set. It's called the Explorer. Hmm. And um, it has a mix of ruby satins and bristleons. And it's got a very nice mix of brushes that can get you Cambridge, which I use all the time. Um, and then grab yourself a cat's tongue in around and you should be ready to go. 
The brush guys, which I think are in the description with the discount code, are a good place to look for that. If they're sold out, we are in stores all over the world. We're in Kings in uh, Canada and Jackson's in the UK and the Sydney Art Store. And we're like located online and around. So, and online at Michael's. Mm -hmm. So there are places to find us. So honestly, if you just go to the Arch River Brushes, it'll pull up. And it's the Explorer set, which is a little bit more, but that is the best overall one for just doing tutorials, not just here, but just generally. Um, Sandra says, I love your videos. All right, so let's finish this up. He's a little bit streaky right now. I mean, we still love him and we accept him as he is, but a little bit streaky. So I'm back into my white and Naples yellow. All right, we like that a bit. And, and where we want to get in there, we're going to get a little bit of our Quinn magenta that blushes things up. And let's come around kind of our hairline with this blushed color. A little bit. It's very light. Mm -hmm. One of the things to uh, think about when you are um, painting uh, skin tones is that they are not one color. If you buy a skin tone from a set, let's get a little more Naples yellow in here, um, you will still have to add other colors into it to make that work. Just add a light value here. And I can kind of do a little swirling motion where I want the, the wet paint to blend, you know, into the pink. I want to have a blend. See, I'm kind of like working these two together, mm -hmm. giving those a bit of an integration. A little bit of integration. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, 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 blend. Can always easily get back into this. Now we know that we've got a lot of hair coming over this, right? So you don't really have to complete the ears. So it's going to look a little weird to you for a second, but once your hair is on there, it just really won't. Add a little bit of color, a little light value to his neck. Come down front along the bridge of the nose just a bit. A little bit top of the lip, top of the chin. Now on his nose, remember we were going to go a little more magenta. Mm -hmm. We can even exaggerate it a little bit. Cold noses and all that. You'll see me tap off and work a value where I want to get into my shadow color, which is really at this point just burnt sienna and, and Mars black. And it's just a slightly, you know, darker value right here on the inside of the eye. Maybe a little bit under and around the nose and that front of that cheek, right? How I do. Mm -hmm. And then definitely, you know, we've got a bit of that at the jawline. Yeah. Sometimes I uh, kind of blend my paint. Now, I may come into a much darker skin tone when I come here and kind of chip in around the ear, back of the hair, back here. And I'll just work that brush. I haven't rinsed out. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the tricks. Come here and soften this jaw. Got a bit of that shadow color in it. And I'm bringing the pink around the eye a bit. 
Winter is wonderful for this. So anyway, we're getting there. You really are. Just it just takes us a minute to find our way. A little bit of a black, a little bit of our brown. You know, we definitely, definitely want to kind of talk some of the shadow that is under the nose. And then there is a bit of a I like to bring that back there. Just start to pull in those things. Let's get our magenta. His lips are, in this particular case, rather pink. So that's useful to us. Very little at the top above that line that we just did. And then you're going to do a much lighter. Pink right there. That's fun. Play with those little things. Play with those areas. Brush in a little blush to the outside. Oh. Wow, that face just really came in. They do. They just come in. You just go, where did you come from in the faces? I was here all along. Soften a little bit of the shadow so it's just deeper there. And again, all of it will come together once we uh, get into the hair. Just making sure we have a nice little, you do want a little light on the neck, not just, just not all the light on the neck. I like to, I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, black blue. Hmm. So that's the ultramarine blue and the uh, Mars black. Here at the back corner of the eye, we're going to add a bit of this before we add the black. on the toe of my brush. There we go. It's a little bit of forward lash. Hmm. A little bit of forward lash. That could be a little bit challenging if you need to get your vision enhancers on. Definitely do so. Definitely do. Enjoy. Enjoy. A little bit of a define mm -hmm. right there. Mandy, welcome to Emoji Chat. I get a little bit of a deep shadow that I might do just very delicately between the lips. Sometimes contrast is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And then just here at this little part of the ear. So, let's get a picture of that, and then we'll do his hair. All right. Ew, looking good. Painting in the face. All right. Oh, my goodness, I was not caught up with chat. So, uh, what was the eyebrow color again? It is the burnt sienna. There's a little bit of Mars black. I, you know, lightened it with a bit of yellow. You could probably lighten it also with a bit of orange. You just don't want it to be too overwhelming. Too overwhelming. You know how sometimes it gets a little overwhelming to the face? Uh, so thank you. Uh, <sighs> my basset hound is fascinated by the painting. Never seen him sit this long. And he's still <laughs> up. Well, Lindsay, hi, basset hound. <laughs> we think it's the brush. Cats also love us. <laughs> mm. So let's do some of his hair. We're going to keep on this number four round. It's a nice brush for this size of a painting. Yeah. Now to do this, we do have to kind of get the back of the scarf, which we know is the burnt sienna and uh, titanium white and Mars black. So let's just catch the back of this so we can easily maybe talk a bit over the scarf because that's what you want to do. You want to We're just catching some highlights here and there, right? Yeah. A 
That's what I like to do. Fold that fabric. Once I have that, I can fairly confidently um, put a little shadow right here. Oh, make us happy later. Yeah. Later, we'll be so glad it's there. So thrilled. I like how cool his face looks. All right. Did you break your Tupperware? Very... Let's add a little bit of our. Mars black to our burnt sienna. Heavier on the burnt sienna this time. And I'm going to bring some of these strokes kind of out and clicked out, but then some of them we're going to bend back into the body of the hair. A wonderful thing is that you know his hair should be tousled. Yeah, I like the brown layering. This works super well. And again, with hair, we're not painting every individual hair. We paint kind of the flow and texture of our hair. Mostly, we paint a lot of value. So when we get here, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. But we're going to take a little of our cad red and our cad yellow together. I haven't rinsed out my brush. And you're going to paint some of these highlights where the hair is maybe enlightened by sun and mm. weather and genetics, right? Where the hair is multi-tonal. Good hairdresser will tell you that all the time. A great hairdresser, even when you go in to have your hair colored, will m make sure that your hair has, like, tones to it. Sandra Gobin says she loves to see the painting develop under the brush. I do too. And Mama Moth, hi Mama Moth, how are you doing? Uh, said she loves to see it develop under my brush. Thank you. I'm using very light pressure and my strokes tend to curve. I'm definitely using a bit of a flicking motion and that just lets me control um how much paint is offloaded now i i did personally choose to kind of wind swept up some of the hair um into the winter i just thought it would be nice and again it's like the branch you you have what you have but maybe you look at it and you go you know i feel like this needs to be perhaps a little more interesting i'm gonna come back over his eyebrow now this very light color. Just a little bit. Just so that his eyebrow and his hair go together. Uh, Tina says, John, would you remind everyone about what glass is safe to painting? Well, John reminds you we're going to continue to do this brush stroke through the hair. About glass safety and homemade tempered palettes. Glass. It's tempered glass. So basically you want to have, um, it's a safety glass. And uh, most cookware is safety glass rated. Um, Pyrex is. So uh, that was weird. Something. Is that Alexa? I think there was something. <laughs> I don't know how what goes up is rated. <laughs> sure. Weird thing. That's so, how anyway. that totally works. Wow. I'm starting to get some value to his hair. Um, I would really, we did a video about glass palettes and mm -hmm. here's what there's the internet 
often says shocking and amazing things to get clicks. Yes. And one of the shocking and amazing things that it says is that you can upcycle frame glass into a glass palette, which you cannot. It is super unsafe. I have been cut by it. Other people have been cut by it. Mm-hmm. People that work in the framing industry will tell you that is not the glass you want. It is not made for moving, jarring, any of the stuff that we have to do with our palettes, and it can unexpectedly shatter and hurt us. Mm-hmm. Even if we tape, I don't know, tape it to cardboard, it still does it. Temper glass or a palette for glass that's designed for that. I'm going to continue to add a little yellow and brown together. Just for an extra little highlight, and I'm going to pull some white just a smidge. I'm not going to go too crazy. Deborah says she'll be back. Yeah. Everyone's like never use. And, you know, it was so funny. When I first started saying it, people, uh, some people suggested that I was trying to uh, mess with other creators. Mm. And they, well, not thankfully. Unfortunately, many people came forward and said that they had seen these blogs, seen these Pinterest pins, seen these Instagram posts, seen the different videos, Mm -hmm. had done it and been hurt. And I know when I uh, was a young artist that just knew everything, I uh, definitely thought that you could do that. And my mom would be like, I don't think you can do that. And I got cut really bad. And then our framer friend, Ooh, just read me the riot act and explained to me all about glass and safety and how that was just never going to work. Mm-hmm. So luckily by the time the internet started telling people, this is a great hack. Um, I already knew it was very dangerous. And so I absolutely have no shade for my fellow creators. And I understand the need to get uh, traction on videos and stuff like that. I certainly feel that pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it isn't worth it because people can get hurt. So we're just going to take a little bit of these highlights right here. If you can see this. And we don't want to, we don't want to do it everywhere. We want to have just some dimensionality. How many hoots is Kristen Tyree? It is three hoots. Ooh. All right. Oh my goodness. Stephanie Jane said, when my son was young, he put his fit, foot through the bottom of a fish tank. We thought was tempered and it was large shards of glass. Yeah. D- Fish tank glass should be tempered. What the heck is going on with Mm -hmm. that? But sometimes it is not. And oh, they ended up in the emergency room. See, so it's very scary. Hello, Victoria. All right. So I think that that is fairly good. Um, Let's call that a step because it's a specific thing to paint that I think people will want to spend a little time focusing on. And then we'll do his sweater and his uh, little neck bit. This is coming in kind of beautifully. This will go really well with Aslan, I think. This will be nice. And I'll probably get, um, I don't know, as we come closer into winter, I'll probably do the lamp post with some little embellishments or birds or something fun for it from, from the series. And so we have at least three for that. Uh, J. Deb says, why would someone want a glass palette? Well, if now the one I demonstrated is the new wave glass palette. And on a glass palette, uh, the paint mixes very beautifully. You can use a palette knife really well. And you can then scrape the palette and remove the dried paint. I honestly am preferring this Masterson, having tried everything on, uh, like, normally I'm the peel palette girl. But this has really gotten me. I'm still on this one sheet of Masterson paper. If you've, my mom does not like these, but I, I, you know what? If you do it like they say it, it's really good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I haven't even had to change the paper out. and, And I bought paper like it was a peel away palette. And I'm like. It's not like a peel away palette in any way. It's really fantastic. So I'm going to continue back with my burnt. um, Sienna and my titanium white on this wonderful, wonderful little sweater. We did a very detailed knit scarf on the cozy cup just recently. So you guys have all kinds of variant skills that you can apply to this situation now. You can be like, oh, but I want to bring these little sweeps around. I want the sweeps, John. Sweeps. I do. I want sweeps. I might be a little more sweepy with my sweeps because I'm, I'm a bit artful. I would be sweepy with the sweeps. I'm going to get into my black. Hmm. Oh, I still want to know exactly which one she has. There's so many different masters and what palettes. Ashley, I took the link 
from the one that I bought and I put it in the description. Mm. And that's the link that I gave to the moderators. So as long as the Amazon store does not change, you know how they do that sometimes, doesn't change it. Yeah. Um, it is exactly what I purchased. I did buy extra sponges and extra papers, not understanding that I could use these, uh, that I could rinse them out and reuse them. I, that, that took me a while to believe. I'm adding shadows here to help define the rolls and the shapes. Of our little scarf. Thank you, Mama Moth. Uh, she says, thank you, Cinnamon. I was tuning in after a stressful day. You make me smile. Miss the bubbles, though. So, mm. dry climates are really hard on the bubble machine. John's got to clean it. The yep. bubble stuff just turned into, like, jelly. So, But it's over there. It's at the easel. So, maybe we'll get it up for the easel for the butterfly this weekend. I think the butterfly is going to be very popular. Yeah, I think we can have that. I'm going to get a little bit of my white. I don't mind if I pick up blue or different things. I'm going to just kind of want to sort of show perhaps a, uh, I like that the sweater is very multicolored. I don't want to have to paint in the whole weave, but I do want to capture some of the colorfulness, even though it's neutral, it's a little colorful. Hmm. And I want to capture some of that. I think it's fun. So I'm just going to grab different, different bits. Like this is the Naples yellow. So I've gotten some ultramarine blue and white in here and get the little Naples yellow in there. And Oops. wiggle your brush around. Let it be rough. That scarf is really. This will come together. Just be the wonderful. It just. Oh, I get some of the purple. I love, I love these sort of chunky. The big knit scarf. Yeah, things. I really do. I go crazy on Etsy. But just painting that kind of loose and expressive, but you know, let that colorfulness be in there because that's what's going to help it feel like, you know, that sort of handmade scarf. Uh, Barbara Robertson is cinnamon a sock folder. No, my dad was the sock folder. My dad is like. He's not only a sock folder, he's a labeler, he's the alphabetizer, he's the one that puts in a little compartment, and that sock only goes in that compartment ever. Ever. Uh, yeah, you know, I definitely took after my mom. <laughs> definitely took after my mom. I'm going to grab a little bit of my just phthalo blue. Uh, my mom... Uh, what Barbara is talking about, my mom uh, is also an artist and she teaches on YouTube on Monday nights. And um, she has this thing where she talks about uh, people who are very organized and together they are sock folders. And then there are people with a loose sock drawer. She and I are loose sock drawer people. Loose. Um, it is, I got to tell you, like sometimes people are like, oh, she means that in a mean way. She absolutely does not. No one admires a sock folder more than my mother. <laughs> she, uh, uh, her current fiance is very much a sock folder. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a sock folder, you need a sock folder in your life. They're good to have around. Your, your mom, the, your mom's the sock folder yes. in our life. It is not as fun for her <laughs> no. as it is for us because when you're when you are the sock folder and you live with non sock folders, well, we are a frustrating group of people. So I'm just also kind of capturing the values and everything that we see in the sweater. I'm mean, gonna just. Feather this up. You know. Oh, Barbara, she says she loves Ginger and John. Uh, yeah, and uh, if you're still on after this, uh, my friend Angela Anderson is on. You can uh, go on and say hi to her mm -hmm. and send our love and hope everyone in her family is safe and wonderful. Adding some white. And we're kind of doing a similar thing that we did to the, you know, the skin tones right here, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to go much, much more white. And I may even, and this is going to seem strange, get into my Naples yellow here. And I want a significantly lighter value because I need this to stand out from the background. Sometimes you want that. Yeah. I'm just dry brushing and bringing this over. 
Uh, I'm over it. She does not uh, fold socks. She pairs them up and sticks them in the drawer. Folding them makes them uh, lose elasticity faster. I Amy's so a stock too. folder. <laughs> I think but you don't fold them because the meta of it is too big. But yes. What, what babe? I'm not a folder. Definitely not. John's definitely a pile in the drawer. Yes. And come here and just pull this in. It's a very light value, and then we can kind of go darker as we go forward. Very much a fairy tale painting. I have a little Prince one saved up. Hmm. I do. I think he might be uh, after April, maybe the little Prince one that I have. Yes, I plan that far ahead. Right now on the channel, things are scheduled through March. I know what you're painting. It's scheduled through March. And it's hard to see on YouTube, but you can go to our website www.archerpa.com and search on the calendar by month and you'll be like wow and you can also search by month in retroactive years mm -hmm. i'm going to come here and i'm going to make a loose little flicking kind of stroke with a lighter blue it's the titanium uh, white and the phthalo blue just flicking back and forth to kind of imply, just loosely express the little bits of the, the sweater that are going on. Mm -hmm. All right, and you want to take a look at that. Am I meticulous about my art supplies? Um, yeah, I, I don't share well either. Territorial. Territorial. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my uh, Quinn Magenta and my Thalo Blue just to deepen the Thalo Blue. Yeah, I'm a little territorial. But yeah, I have things. There's, I'm, I'm a little bit more of that for the studio because I can't work if it's, if it's not. It's very challenging for me to work if I can't see what I have. And then I keep buying things that I already have a lot of. If I, if I don't manage that a little bit more thoughtfully. Uh, Karen Davis says, I love you guys. And Karen's like, I'm both. Cinnamon is loose with her socks. I'm so loose with my socks. <laughs> I can rarely find a matching pair because my dog. Yeah. For John, it's the dog really does. If if the dog finds socks anywhere, she's she's gone with them. And then if she can't find them, she steals them right off his feet. <laughs> Just does. Because she loves him so much. She has to. All right. I feel like we're there. And then we're ready to go on to the owl and the branch. All right. All right. Is this going well? Let's see here. So if you're coming in new while well, John is getting the step up and the step for the branch. Oh, and we time stamp these as well. So it does take us a minute to get the mini books written um, a week or so. And then we also chapter time stamp this. So what happens is, is if you need that kind of structure, and many, many people do, um, you can then go, oh, I'm on step two, and then you can find that easily without trying to scroll through the video because they're time stamped. Um, it's a really nice feature that I like to keep uh, uh, together. How do I store my paints? Um, I organize them into carts and I put them on shelves and I try to make sure, especially if they're metal tubes, that they're not getting thrown around and damaged. Mm. Kind of, thing. it's a hit miss thing there. All right. Okay. Branch. Shall we branch, sir? We branched. Let's do it. We're going to take our ultramarine blue and our black again, and we're going to come here, kind of define this branch, shall we? Now, for sure, this particular owl can talk. I have decided. Well, I think probably he says, you know, are you a son of Adam? <laughs> if you come to say this all, and where is Aslan? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> is probably what. 
I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white to that mix of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to come here into the tree, and I'm going to make little sort of dashing rough marks. They will not be as heavy down at the bottom of the branch, um, and I will be much more liberal with my paint at the top. Tia Valentin says hi, and Start Dream Girl says please. I'd love to see what's going on in the chat. So we're just wiggling, 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 wiggling. If you need a place to share your artwork, Art Sherpa Tutorials, and the group is mainly focused on sharing Art Sherpa Tutorials, um, you can come by. And, and I understand many of you don't like Facebook, and I don't blame you. Don't worry. Um, we try to make sure that the watercolor lessons are also on the website. And just adding white to that ultramarine blue and Mars black mix. Kind of gives us a pain's gray. Um, but we do have a really lovely group. It is curated. Uh, we don't do politics. We don't do nudes. Um, not that I am against uh, religion, but we don't do religion just because people get in fights on the internet. And that isn't what art's about. Uh, so... We kind of really curate and moderate the group and try to keep it really focused on the art stuff. So if you'd like a place to share uh, on the internet that is just about a th that kind of a thing, that would be a good place to do that. I'm coming along the top of the branches. Uh, Cinnamon is probably thinking, how long can they talk about socks? I'm trying to think here. Valerie, talk about socks. When we were in um, Eddie Izzard's live stream, we were talking about some pretty random things. So you can understand how this just totally goes random sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, like I was listening, and mostly I was like, oh, my gosh, why you run so far? I don't want to run anywhere. But um, <laughs> So can I ask a question? Yeah. So when you were watching it, did you did you experience like when you were going to ask a question, your heart rate got up and you were a little like nervous? Like, oh, I wonder if my question will be answered. No, I'm more nervous because my name is highlighted and it has a check and I don't know how anyone's going to interpret that. And right away people were like, how you had that check? And I'm like, I work real hard. <laughs> and also, and this is not like, I'm not like, oh, I, I just have a lot more subs. So mm. That you don't really know how that's going to go over, right? Like, because you want to be respectful of another creator's space. And then on top of that, I'm kind of a fan. But I didn't really expect to be talked to. They weren't running moderators in the chat. And they didn't have somebody that was really engaging with the chat, which I highly think that they should do. That was an interesting thing, though. Um, so I wasn't that nervous. And I really enjoyed meeting other lovely people in a chat. Sometimes in gaming, it gets a little rough out there. I'm adding mm. a little white to the top of this, if you know what I mean. Yes. So let's look at yes, that. Yes, I do. Can I substitute Payne's Gray for Black? Don Hartwell asks. Yes, you absolutely can. And some artists prefer Payne's Gray to Black. Uh, you can mix a Payne's Gray uh, with a little bit of ultramarine blue, uh, black, and white, or with phthalo blue, black, and white. If you do the phthalo blue, black, and white, it will be a much more cool, steely gray. If you do the ultramarine, uh, uh, blue, black, and white will be a much more neutral gray. Still buy it's a little bit cool, but be not quite as like steel, blue steel, Zootlander. Not as much that. Okay, so now we're going to take uh, a lot more white hmm. onto our brush. Just a lot more. And I'm going to kind of add a bit of snow. And it's okay that there's a little bit of gray on here because snow is not you know, one uniformy color. So we're going to put that on. Did I save the owl for last? Yes, I did. A bit of a... Sometimes when you're trying to go, where would the snow be? Just imagine what surfaces could it land on and be held by. Like sticky rain. Like very sticky, fluffy rain. I really like putting snow on things. I feel like things need snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It's so funny. I know sometimes we're feeling like, man, winter paintings. <laughs> and those are going to be gone in about a minute. So it's sort of nice to, to enjoy yeah. them while they're here. 
Uh, Virginia Welsh says, seeing all the names scroll by, I see here, I feel like I'm seeing family. Thank you all. I do think of us as family. I think of us as an art family. Um, if, and, I, and I have to say, in the art vertical on YouTube, specifically, I think that there is a greater kind of art family that's going on where there are people who are in tons of live streams and they know each other and they see each other online and they're always supportive and they always have a kind word and it's pretty amazing. All right, how do we look at this week? Branching it up. Yeah. Branch it up, branch it up, branch it up. Gonna add a little brown, get a little white. Might come through here and uh, sometimes with wood, it's nice to have a, a some tonality, just a bit. And then I'll get a little black. All right. Shall we step? Shall we yeah. step? Shall we step? Ashley Welch, I see you throwing up the heart hands. Heart hands. We used to do this all the time. Heart hands. And then we can be like BTS. Wait, I'm not doing it right. There we go. BTS. It's so lame when I do it. Spectacularly lame. It's like this. But honestly, come by legitimately, I watch a lot of Korean rom-com. So I was before BTS. But that's why I know about that. I watch a lot of Korean rom-com. John's always like, is it subtitled? <laughs> but you know what? It's good. Right now I'm watching The Uncanny Counter. Mm -hmm. I have a bit of insomnia, so that's how I watch all the TV yet work all day. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you that saw me up at 4 this morning... All right, we're going to be doing Mr. Owl Pants. Let's uh, start out with a little bit of our cad yellow and some of our cad red, and we're going to make uh, an orange. Now, there was already some burnt sienna in here, and I'm not avoiding it because I thought probably is very nice. There we go. Just starting, starting to think about that, shall we? Yeah. Kristen says the bears are not hibernating in Michigan. It's a bit warmer here than usual. Ah, that would worry me a great deal. I'm going to come under the beak just a bit. We're going to want to make sure that we've got a kind of shadow or contrast sort of happening uh, around here. And it's a good time to kind of come in. I'm going to grab a bit of this color as well and talk, speak to the eye a bit. Wonderful black eye. Not like a black eye like we smacked him, but like a black eye like his beautiful black eye. Seeing the things of the world. And that is wonderful. I can always come through with a little bit of white. And probably even like more white. Right under the eye. But there. And a little bit there. And that'll let us do the feathers to that inside corner without too much difficulty. Also, great time to grab a little bit of the cad red. And I'm going to add a little of the burnt umber to it because we got some, some footies. Mm. Two claws. Yeah, they're clawsies. I'm going to bring a little line out here. Add the two claws, cad red, cad yellow, burnt sienna. That's the base. We're just, we're just saying that's the base. And then let's bring this one here. These kind of have a little opposing grip. And I might get into my black. I haven't rinsed out. Sometimes it's nice to get into the black. Just thinking about that a bit. All that there. And then let's get some white involved. Get the white involved. Ooh. Let's come along the top.
creating a little bit of, you know, we're thinking about it on the feet, right? Mm -hmm. I've rinsed out. I'm getting some pure black. I'm going to trim in to the claws. Also, I'm going to add a bit of shadow. And we're doing a little bit of an exaggerated shadow. Yeah. It's going to help those feet stand out from the branch. Need that. Uh, Valerie says, I didn't mean that se statement in a sexist way, John. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. I missed him, and I'm sure it's fine. Oh, look, I didn't catch that. I am absolutely <laughs> sure it's fine. You, you, she said, I told my husband that husbands change the water and fetches what the artists need. He just walked away. <laughs> Well, it's not totally untrue. Well, that's what we got to help. To, to, I didn't think that, I think that was just a general partner. Like if you're painting, we got to go get the stuff. Yeah, I think, I think that's, yeah, totally. You know, let's, here's what I do think that, uh, I call it compassionate conversation. I do believe not politically correct, but compassionate conversation. And what that is is that it considers how your words make another person feel. So uh, instead of worrying about like what's right or wrong to say in the world as what's popular now, in each conversational situation, I just try to ask myself, how are my words going to make the other person feel? And I think that also we have to be compassionate listeners and ask ourselves, was any harm intended? Because we all misspeak. And I know some days I need some extra forgiveness. And uh, I and I think it's important that where we can give it, and I'm not saying ignore what's wrong. Don't. Of course not. I'm just saying it, it's like the little things. Like today in the chat, we were talking about what pronoun was appropriate. And, um, you know, and I'm only doing that because, like, because wanting to make people feel heard and understood and recognized and validated not for some greater crazy like ideal but because sometimes our words can really be healing and powerful uh and sometimes our listening and being understanding and not looking not looking to have a moment but trying to look to have a connection if that makes sense compassionate listening and compassionate talking over politically correct listening and politically correct talking I that think they're sense. cousins. I just think that it's easy to get lost in the details of the other. Mm -hmm. It's my thoughts. I'm not in charge of anything. So <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of my black. And mix some brown into it. You know, so I try not to, I, you guys are always so sweet. You guys will often write and be like, oh, I, you know, I didn't mean anything or I'm not trying to. But generally, where I can, as long as I'm having a good day, as long as I'm watching my halt, my hungry, angry, lonely, tired stuff, mm -hmm. I try to give the benefit of the doubt. Now, it's not that I don't ever, you know, like go, oh, hey, something's wrong or, you know, have a big reaction to something. I'm human. Everybody does. But I try to be present to it and think about what's going on. All right. Da -da 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 -da. And then I'm going to... Got a little bit of a dark line here. We're just sort of putting in these dark lines. He has this fabulous bit of feathery. Yeah. It's just a fabulous bit of feathery. Maybe more a little bit here. And we want to make sure that we're kind of capturing it. And I'm going to come down the side. And I can tip for sure a bit on the outside with a light feather. But if I get this in now, I'll do okay gonna have a weird moment and then it's gonna be okay these are one of my favorites to do we just did this really incredible version of one of these raptors these birds in flight mm -hmm. in the patronage it was just super action-based super awesome I was really pleased with it I really like the owl it turned out yeah. nice yeah I liked his little outstretched wings floofy uh, Kristen says, you're lucky, Sim, and John is unique. My husband would never help me either. I have shown him some artists whose husbands help. My husband isn't very tech savvy anymore. He was in the old days. You know, I, I hear that a lot, and I do think that I have, um, I've been very blessed. I really, my husband's a very good partner and very good teammate, and 
I am very grateful for that. I would say that um, marriage is long. <laughs> it is. And being on each other's team makes it uh, pass much more pleasantly. Yeah. Where possible. That's a two-way street, of course. You know, I think uh, it's easy to get lost in our lives. Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Oh, Amy's bringing up a good thing. What I have to say as well is that emotions are extremely hard to convey through text unless you're a character in a book or an actor with a script. So true. Mm -hmm. My very good friend wrote me a very reasonable message. But I was having a very hard day, and I was having, the, like, the hardest time reading the message in the tone that I absolutely knew it was sent to me in. Yeah. Like, I knew it was sent to me in a kind and completely loving tone, but I was in such a rough place in... And the, the state you're in, the mental state you're in, absolutely does affect. Let's get a little bit of our uh, ultramarine blue over into these white feather mixes where we're doing the gray. Um, and, that's, and that's important to remember is that the way that you feel impacts the tone in which you read your messages. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be a big problem. You know, when you're trying to connect or uh, reasonably, you know, see someone eye to eye, you know, and I think we forget to take that into account, isn't it? Yeah. Very hard to do. Very hard. And then again, it's also hard to know when to react and when to speak up and say something. So this this business of being human is, is uh, tough. Yeah. <laughs> It's tough. I wish it was like that movie Soul we were talking about earlier. So what I'm taking here is my ultramarine blue. Uh, there is a little Mars black in my brush. There's a little bit of burnt sienna. It's kind of still dirty. You can see that's giving me kind of a cool gray. And we're coming through here. And the brush strokes are implying a texture. And, you know, the feather and everything. The... Dark value that I put there uh, layers really nicely. And that's just the start to getting the face in. And then I'm looking here and I, I'm going to have to uh, come in and sort of move up the dark feather. And that'll happen. Yeah. I'll move it right here because I want both sides to be as high for it to look right. I'm getting back into my black and brown. And adding a little bit of a dark interior feather. Come back then into my light color. Go real, real light on my number four round. Man, I haven't moved out of this in a second, have I? No. And sometimes you've got to let things kind of have a bit of a rest. Make a little blue in there. The blue is very powerful. It really is. Because it just makes things, you know, very neutral. And we're going to mm -hmm. put in the light feathers initially at first. These are short little strokes. Let's enjoy them. Thank you, babe, for being here tonight. I know you were so tired. Oh, no, this is okay. You're doing so good. I enjoy watching you paint, so it's a good thing to do. He's been installing all kinds of things lately. The installations are... <laughs> physically demanding. Huh? They're a little physically demanding. They're a little physically demanding. All right, so you can see that we're starting to build up his little featherness. And then we're going to come through here, and let's build up some more featherness. I want a little featherness. All right, a little more brown into that. But we're still doing very light colors. Uh, what I have learned in uh, 60 years is we're not in control, of in, in control of anything but ourselves, and sometimes not even ourselves. That's where that kind of, like, present compassion comes in. 
which is just that, man, some days we all just have a hard one. We all just have a hard one some days. Anybody can get lost in it. I always like to say that nobody's a... Uh, Nobody's horse is so high or pedestal so solid and tall that you cannot get knocked right off of it, mm -hmm. given the right leverage. You know, and so maybe it's tired. Maybe it's stress at work. You know, it's hard to say what that leverage is. Everybody has a different leverage. But, you know, we all have a person. I'm going to do dark brown here, so we're going to keep doing these neutral feathers, which are the burnt sienna or the Mars black, or sometimes a little bit of the ultramarine blue. This was more in the Mars black and uh, burnt sienna. You know, it just, some days. Bring some of these feathers a little bit over the branch, kind of layering this object in, and it starts to exist here, doesn't it? Yeah. Here we go. All right. Oh, the owl is getting cuter, says Lily. Yeah, he's going to be so cute when he's done. I mean, we got the owl and the mushroom. Almost this is a similar owl, isn't it, to the one mm -hmm. I put on the mushroom? I painted this owl a lot lately. You I do don't paint know what's this going. owl a lot. He's a I don't, fluffy guy. He's a fluffy guy, and he lives in my imagination. There's also a weird oak tree that lives in my imagination since, like, childhood. <laughs> since childhood, certain things have been in my imagination. We're going to bring these darker feathers down. You know, this is speaking a bit to the wing, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's talk a little bit to the tail. I can come back into my lighter feathers and pull it in while everything is wet. But you can see that that gives it uh, a bit of a... A bit of a bit. A bit? A bit of a bit. A little bit of a bit. Let's come here and add some... Of these little darker little dots, right? Yeah. Uh, Samantha's Aunt Teresa says hi, John and Cinnamon. So I Hello. say hi back to your aunt. Nice to see you. And Sandra says he looks more like an owl, brushstroke by brushstroke. Yeah, paintings are like that. He just paintings and human lives are like that. It's emerges sometimes. The results or your hard work don't show until the very end. Hard to be patient, isn't it? To the very end. Trust that it's going to be okay. Relax into the moment. I really, I'm going to be thinking about that soul movie a lot lately. They brought up some gorgeous ideas and some beautiful stuff about the nature of being alive what yeah. is important yeah that was really wonderful i'm gonna make you watch it later i'll watch music it. music was fantastic as well animation was lovely i loved the the style and uh, expression that was in there Rinsing out. Mm, somebody said chocolate. Chocolate is the best. <laughs> Who's bringing chocolate? I I'm going to get a little bit of my uh, yellow chocolate. and some of my white, and that's going to go on the tip of the beak. Maybe even a little more white. We really see that, don't we? No, it's yeah. kind of like his little beaky beaks. His little beaky beaks. That's rinsey, really nice. rinsey, rinse. Shall we rinsey, rinsey, rinse? I think I need a little more water on my brush. Dry brush this out. Oh, the little, he just comes right together. He does. He just, he wants to be together. He wants to be with us. He loves us. He knows. He knows. 
He knows he wants to be part of this. He wants to live on our canvas in this world that we've made. Where magic, old magic, love and family, compassion and all the things of real true merit and value. Mm -hmm. There we go. We're just bringing this light value through, little short feathering stroke. And here it is. Sometimes it's nice to bring a little more of the darker in there. He's looking pretty good. Yeah. He's looking very owly, isn't he? Let's do some fun, crazy stuff. Take a little bit of our white and our Naples. Yellow light and add a little bit of a light area to that and just to kind of highlight the inside of his eye and pull it forward a bit, maybe a little bit to the outside here and the feathers. Uh, a little bit of wintry glow. Mm. Let's see where he is. Uh, can you let us suggest a painting for us to teach? Yeah, you know, I always take suggestions. Um, if ever you have a suggestion for a painting, uh, you can uh, leave it in the comments of the video. I read my comments all the time. If I see people suggesting stuff uh, a lot, generally it will make uh, the calendar. Mm -hmm. um, I do have things scheduled through uh, March. And if you check my website, um, that's a lot of paintings. And I may already have it kind of coming up. And also I have over a thousand that I've already done. So I may have done it. But if you're going to ask for a manatee, I have not yet painted a manatee. But we're getting there. Like, we're now down to, like, I have not painted a hippo or a manatee. Why? I'm pro-hippo. I'm pro-manatee. I have no idea why I haven't painted one. I'm going to take a little of my white and pink. And this is just about a little bit of artistry. Sometimes. You will want to add things that maybe aren't necessarily there as much in life as other things but they add elements of magic and awe mm. to the moment let's get a detailed brush and i am going to put out a small amount of uh llamas or alpacas <laughs> llamas or alpacas yeah i gotta paint a llama i've done i've done some stuff in uh, watercolor but i think i need to do one on the channel we got to get me through acrylic april though guys and you guys everybody needs to do acrylic april Every day, you're going to paint with me in April, right? Right? Good. I Good. will be here. <laughs> Every day. Every day. My son would love a hippopotamus. All right. So let's come here. Ooh. We're going to just add a little bit of that to his eye. Just to kind of bring the little sparkle. Yeah, that really does. Let's create a little bit of that, that magic for him. A little bit on the beak. Just a bit to help him, you know. And I think I'm going to come a little bit to this part of the eye and just add a little bit of uh, that blue just to exaggerate kind of the different little reflections. So sometimes, you know, we have uh, lighting that doesn't necessarily give those to us, but they're really wonderful to have. Yeah. So we add them in ourselves just because we know we need them. All right. 
Uh, I can imagine all the paintings you're doing right now. Yeah, every morning you get up and I do a painting. Mm -hmm. Or two. Or, or three. Because not everything makes, as you guys have seen, if you're in Emoji Club or in the Patronage, not everything makes necessarily acrylic april i've showed you ones from 2019 that didn't necessarily you know make the final cut because i really try to think about uh, the staging of it like I, I give myself a goal like what do i want you guys to come out of the program with right like is it a skill set is it an understanding of particular techniques and how they relate and i try to make sure that each painting builds on the one previously but then i also try to make sure if you want to come in and do one that you're good as well so it's really kind of a juggle to see how they curate and relate together. I have kind of a thought for this year. We'll see if it comes together. Now, I like to sign my paintings. You don't have to, but I think it's a nice thing to do. I'm using an Art Sherpa number one round. It's a detail brush. It's really rather nice detail brush. And I'm using fluid acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. That is this golden fluid. It's just my favorite. They don't pay me. I just like them. It just turned out. I like to be a little thoughtful about the signature. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm like signature and it's just done. And then other times I'm like, I will sound beautifully. All right. What is the title of this book cover? If, if you mean like what, what book um, is this from? This is from Narnia, Narnia, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, if you mean the mini book, uh, it will generally be oh. what we call this here. Is that now, what I mean? This, was an, this wasn't an image you took from some book cover. Oh, no, no, no. This was not from a book cover. This was a, a, an image that I licensed from a uh, website that's for that. And then um, and it just made me feel of Narnia. It made me feel of this world, and so I connected those two this things was, together. It's not a book cover. This was just a random stock image of a boy looking at an owl, and she turned it into this painting. Which I really, really liked. So, yeah. All right. This is wonderful. We will try to get the mini book up for you guys uh, really soon. Um, I will announce the Red Cup and Frida as soon as they're done. I'll put them. I'll make sure I put something in the community tab here on YouTube, and I tweet it, and I pin it, and I... Instagram it and I post it and I put it in group. And uh, also, you can check, uh, make sure the uh, each video page updates as well. So, if those are things that you like and you love them, please come by and print them out and have them to help you get even more success in your artwork. I feel like we covered a lot today. Yeah, I think so. Like spiritually, emotionally, humanitarian wise, and a few art skills got thrown down and we made something. This is gonna go beautifully with Aslan, I think. So, our, or any of the boy paintings, if you look on my YouTube channel, I curated a playlist of all the uh, fairy tale little boy paintings that we have mm -hmm. and we have, this will be the fifth one. Wow. So if that's something that you're looking for, you can find other pieces that match here, like he would go beautifully with the boy in the moon. Yep. Also, I think on an eight by eight surface. Let's take a deep breath. Breathe in our creativity. Breathe out our worries and our frustration. One more time. Just art. It's much more important in your experience of how you enjoy painting than anything else. Your painting isn't supposed to look exactly like mine. Remember, you're an individual person, a unique being. And so you'll have an owl and a branch and a boy, and I'll have an owl and a branch and a boy, unless you decide to paint something else entirely. Mm -hmm. And those are both good things. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. <gasps> you forgot the P in your name. <laughs> sure. stay to the end to see all the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> you would see that later and you'd be like ah sure somebody was like you forgot the pee and i was like you sure did i never saw that try the surface <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>
<laughs> so thank you guys for joining and staying with us. We love seeing you. This kind of son of this kind of stuff is. I do. like his little I like their, the his demons. gift for the work. <laughs> It's like you saved the blooper for the end. Yep. I think I am just a blooper, but it's turned into a YouTube show. <laughs> it's just turned into a YouTube show. It is. Well, that's, you know, that's the beauty of it. Look, we got it. You Sherpa did it. There we go. And that's how you fix your signature if you, you forget go. to... Uh... <laughs> it's a learning moment. If you forget to sign it correctly, that's how you do that. And that's another reason why it's really nice to have you. Shall we try again? Okay. Let's try again. Have compassion for yourself and forgiveness for your mistakes. We all make them all the time. So it's okay to recognize when they happen and just paint over it. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>